Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC Abu Dhabi. Uh, this is going to be the first of two DFS videos. This is where we go through each fight and identify who the best plays are from a uh, DraftKings perspective. And then we're going to do a betting breakdown probably tomorrow. And then at some point, either tomorrow night or Saturday morning, uh, we're going to do a lineup construction video where we mess around with Saber Sim and all the different tools to try to you know, take our best plays and put them together in lineups that not only have a chance to win, but have a chance to win a lot. So uh, that's going to be a completely different discipline that we're going to address a little bit later. Uh, but now we're just going to get through the entire card and identify who I think are the best DFS plays. And uh, keep in mind that it is an early start. Uh, I, I, I love this. <laughs> this is so much better for me than the 6 p.m. ending at 1 a.m., messing up Saturday night dinners and stuff like that. Uh, this is going to be noon Eastern time. So you could probably, if you wanted to, you know, catch as much of the card as you can. Um, and uh, looking forward to it. We also have a full, looks like, you know, 13 fights, which is, you know, it, it's right in the, the realm of, uh, of normalcy. I mean, 14 obviously would be better. 11 would be more difficult, but 13 is certainly, certainly doable. So let's just go through these. And again, what we're looking for is a combination of money line value uh, uh, finishing upside and uh, and grappling upside because these are the things that score a lot. <laughs> the grappling upside and the, the finishing upside. Money line value doesn't score, but it you know it, it helps your lineup construction somewhat. Anyway, let's get started with uh, Cedric Dumas versus Dennis Tolulin, and you have Dumas is a minus two hundred favorite, and with respect to the actual salaries. Looks about right. Don't, don't see any real money line value here. It's an interesting fight because, I mean, from what I've seen of both of these fighters, I mean, Dennis Tullulian is the one who kind of really puts the pressure on and, and turns the fight into sort of a brawl. And, you know, Cedric Dumas, for, for, I don't know, for my money at least, he fights kind of a boring style. You know, he, um, he doesn't really, he's not really that aggressive. Um, the... the he, he did get a, a nice, well, nice win. He got a win over Cody Brundage, who, you know, was was in an, that fight on short notice, short notice, and displayed pretty poor fight IQ in that whole fight. Uh, he did have, a, I guess, a pretty nice win against Azatar, but didn't really score anything. You know, just got one takedown and a whole, you know, some and like thirty four significant strikes. A very, very boring fight. I mean, I can't imagine this guy being capable of putting up a score, you know, and it's, you know, I don't want to overstate my opinion here. I mean, when you, because when you look at the inside the distance line, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. You have Cedric Dumas inside is plus 115. It's, it's almost a pick em. but I mean, just, I mean, I just know what good DraftKings scores look like, and this is not one of them, you know, just kind of a low volume striker that has some takedown upside, but doesn't really do a lot with them. I, mean, I don't know. I I, th I think this is kind of a lemon. And and if in fact, you know, the, this inside the distance line stays where it is, I guess he's going to have to get owned. And I don't know. I, I'm kind of inclined to fade him in this type of spot. Um, I, I can't imagine this this inside the distance line holding because I'll just basically bet him to not finish. You know, I just, I just can't see that. The only thing I will say is that because Tilluin is that aggressive maybe Dumas is going to be forced to finish it. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if Tullian kind of runs out of gas or whatever, but it's not going to be the type of finish like where Dumas is all over him and the, you know, right from the word go enough where he can really build up, you know, put a ceiling up. So kind of opposed to the Dumas side, if anything, I'd rather play to you know, He's, he's 7,300. And I bet you his, his inside the distance line is probably like plus 300 or something. I mean, Tullian inside is like anywhere between plus 260 and plus 300. I mean, that's very reasonable for this price. Um, so I, I think he's a very, very viable GPP player. Okay, moving on, we have Jai Herbert versus uh, Rolando uh, Bedoya. Um, 8,600, 7,600. And it looks as though a, a little bit of money line value, I guess, in Bedoya. Eh, not not really enough to speak of. 
I mean, if anything, is tiny little bit of money value, a money line value. But when you look at the inside the distance lines here, I mean, it all looks pretty poor. You know, Herbert inside plus 275, that's terrible, you know, for his price. And even Bedoya inside, he's like plus 300. He's the same as Tullian. He's a full, what, uh, 300 more, you know? So I guess if anything, Bedoya would be my, my preferred side. But I think this whole fight is kind of a pass. You know, both these... Guys are strikers. There's not a lot of takedown upside, I think, from either side. The inside the distance line is pretty poor, so I think this this fight's probably a pass. Okay, Victoria Dudakova versus Sam Hughes. So Dudakova's been, you know, she takes money every single fight. Everybody's expecting some big performance every single fight, and we still haven't gotten it. And and, and Sam Hughes just continues to grind. You know, she, every once in a while, she'll put up like a really really nice performance. She had. Two big, big time wins against uh, well, Estela Nunez and and Elise Reed. I mean, with enormous freaking um, enormous fantasy point upside, like ninety here at seventy three hundred, one hundred twenty one points here against Elise Reed breaking the slate. And then, okay, she so lost to Marina Rodriguez. That's 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 a tough law. That's a tough fight, you know. And then Jacqueline Amarin had her dead in the first round. She was they thought she was going to get submitted. And she completely turned around and, and turned the whole fight around and ended up just smothering. Her. And, you know, and this is a really, really good performance here. I mean, only 83 fantasy points, but that's not bad. Then you have Jaraguay. She couldn't really get too much going over there. So she just kind of took a loss. But, but Jaraguay is like really, really good, you know. Uh, and you look at Dudakova here. She has, does have two wins. This win against Nunez doesn't exist because this is when Nunez got hurt. And then you it, really within like two seconds of the first round. And then Jin Frey, I mean, it's okay. She did get a knockdown and still only got 77 fantasy points. She doesn't look like she scores a lot. So I guess if anything, just because she's the underdog, I imagine I would just prefer Sam Hughes. Um, and due to Kobe, I, I can't, I can't see getting to her, honestly. Okay, moving on, we have um, Yuga Kutalatse versus, was this like Jared Vucenich, um, Jordan Vucenich. Uh, let's just take a look at the odds here. Kutalatse, 8,800. So we're expecting, again, close to, I guess, a two to one favorite and minus 225, which is, you know, pretty healthy, pretty healthy favorite for that that price. Um, let's take for that uh, DraftKings price. Let's take a look at the inside of the distance line. You have Kulaze plus 230, which is poor. And Vucenich is, is poor as well. But I guess Kudalaze. Does he have takedown upside? I mean, I don't I don't really see it. You know, he's one takedown against Ismagulov and one against Brenner. And he was doing really well against Brenner, and then he ran out of gas. I mean, I think I think this fight's pretty poor. You know, I think his his as a play is pretty poor. Um, let's see Vucenich here. Well, Vucenich has a couple of subs. Uh, this is this is promising actually. If you look back at his his career here, he had a one round first round submission sub here, and then second round submission sub last year. Doesn't really fight all that much though. Twenty eight years old. I mean. It's a rough fight to call. I mean, I I, don't, I can't imagine playing Gudalaze unless I'm missing something here. Um, maybe maybe I literally am missing. Let me, let me go back. What what am, what what am I missing with respect to Gudalaze? Well, why is this not just a terrible play? Let's look at the metrics a little more, I guess. So, uh, plus two twenty inside. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. So. I just you just can't play it. I think the whole fight's probably a pass. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, I, I suppose Vucenich, if, if he's any good, his his upside is in his in his subs. So I guess dog or pass as far as DFS goes. Uh, we got to find some good favorites soon, and I think I think I think they're coming. So we have Shamil Gazia versus Dante Mays, ninety one hundred seventy one hundred. I mean, I have to imagine 
Goose bet Gaziev's going to be a good play here. Minus 230 and, uh, to win. I don't really care too much about that, but okay, here we go. So Gaziev inside is minus 130. I finally, finally have a decent inside the distance line. Um, may as well look at round one also. Round one plus 250 for him. That's pretty good. That's very good, actually. And then take a look at just for fun. One takedown here against Rosen Strait. I mean, so it's not really doesn't look like a a, a, a grappler, really. Um let's take a look a little more into his career here. Let's see if we can't get some grappling upside here. Well, here's a sub, first round sub. Um third round split here. I, He's had some subs. I may, maybe he can get some takedowns. So this is it's fine. I mean, it's not like the greatest play in the world, but it, it's certainly the best we have so far with respect to an inside the distance line. So we'll put him in here for now. Dante Mays, I'm, I just, I'm not playing. Him. I mean, he just doesn't have finishing upside. He doesn't have scoring upside, and he doesn't have a lot of win odds here. So I'm probably not going to play him. He's got too many other good underdogs so far. All right, you have. Kelf Keu, I guess Fernandez versus Muhammad Yaya. So 9,300, 6,900. That's a big number. I mean, he's got to, he's got to really have a good, very strong inside the distance line to make this work. Let's see. Keu Fernandez was minus 200 at least. Okay. Minus 175. That's pretty good. All right, I don't mind that. Um, Keu Fernandez minus 175 inside the distance. That's pretty strong. Let's look at first round. Plus 185. All right, that's good, too. His price is not – is 9,300 is tough. It's rough business, but um, let's see. He did get one takedown against Mark Diakasey, which is not easy. I mean, Diakasey is a very good wrestler. So maybe this is the path. Maybe, maybe Fernandez can get takedowns as well and, and really put up a good score here. But, but all these others, look at first round – Head kick, first round kick, TKO. Yeah, he's got a couple of subs, I guess. Um, but again, I think I think it's a good play. I, I just hope there's better. That's the same. That's the way I, I think about both of these guys, Gaziev and Fernandez. The good thing is you can afford them because I so far I think there are some pretty good underdogs here. And, and Yaya, unfortunately, I don't think this wins this fight enough. Right? Let's see. Actually, what were what were the odds here? Wins the fight 20% of the time, right? Or 25% of the time. I, I don't know. He's, he has, he's low volume. Uh, if he wins, I don't see him scoring much. I, I, just, I don't know. I, I think he's a pass. All right. Alonzo Menafield versus Osmat Murzakhanov. Minus 190, plus 160 as far as the odds go. Let's look at the prices. 8,700, 7,500. Okay, so this is all pretty kosher as far as the money line goes. So let's just go straight to the inside the distance. Line. Let's see if Marzakhanov can be a good play, because I think he can. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Marzakhanov plus 110 at 8,700. All right, that, that's actually a pretty good play. I, I actually almost prefer that to Gaziev and Fernandez because of the price. Um, so that's actually not bad. Let's look at Menafield, Menafield inside plus 320. And that's not terrible either, honestly, for his price. Very similar to T. Lulin, except a couple of hundred dollars more. Let's take a look at this guy, by the way, Mirzakhanov. Just take, just KO. I mean, knockdowns. He just, just kills people. And a takedown here. I mean, if you give me a knockdown and a takedown, it's kind of weird that those only score like 73 points. Um, I guess because they were around three. Uh, let's let's take a look at his career here a little bit, just for fun. He is 35. Um, and so the thing is, I just don't I don't like the lack of takedowns. You know, look at this. Andre Muniz is the same Andre Muniz. It's 2016, though, but still. Uh, KO round one. I don't like this thing, this 
this Guto innocent decision. Um, so I don't know. Win against just Dustin Jacoby is, is actually pretty good. Um, getting a decision against him. That's actually that's not bad. I might want to rewatch that fight. Um, Jacoby is actually not bad. Then again, Jacoby here, yeah, it says uh, he also fought both these guys. Check this out. He, Jacoby fought Menafield as well. Menafield beat him, also beat him. So I like it. I mean, it's a good play. It, it's it's a good play. Is it is it a great play? Again, it's, it's same situation. You know, and this is what's going to make this probably a good GPP slate is that there's no locks, it seems. I mean, I, I wouldn't consider any of these three like lock plays, but they're the best we have so far of the favorites. All right, uh, Elvis Brenner versus Joel Alvarez. I, I, this has to be the key fight, right? I mean, Brenner always brings it. Alvarez, lots of subs on his resume as well. I mean, there's just no way this does not um, rate as the best uh I mean, kind of like that fight that's going to deliver, right? Let's see. Alvarez, Brenner, minus 180, plus 155. I don't care too much about the money line for this one. Boy, what is this? This is so surprising to me. Elvis Brenner inside is only plus 320. I mean, he's very aggressive. So I, I don't, well, I mean, but given, I'll tell you this, given the prices, look at Alvarez. He's like minus 110. I mean, he's minus 110 and, and 8,300. This is this is definitely the best play on the slate. I mean, so far, at least. And, and, and we, you know what? It goes to show you, this is, and this is gonna, we might save this for the lineup construction video. Because Alvarez is such a good play, Brenner is like some insane leverage. You know, like, it looks like his inside the distance line is really poor. And I guess technically it is, but listen, we know what we saw, right? This guy never stops. This guy's very aggressive. And uh, and if Alvarez is going to, in fact, be like a, such an amazing looking play, he's going to be really, really popular. And look at Elvis Brenner. What, 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 what is, what's the guy got to do? I mean, he, he won a, a boring fight against Tukagov, whatever. And then he's done nothing but bring the heat. You know, <laughs> Kudaladze, he came back from the depths. He got a knockdown, two takedowns, and a third round finish. Kruszewski, first round KO like it was nothing. And, and then Uralabai, Uralabai is an animal. And, and he was able to get two reversals against him. I think Brenner's an amazing play this week. So, so I, I like both these teams. I like both these, I like both these guys. All right. Um, Lupi Godinez versus uh, Mackenzie Dern. This one could be another uh, another uh, another fun one because I don't think either of these fighters are going to have great inside the distance lines, but the price is you know very tasty because it's eighty two hundred eight k. So you want to give it a little bit of respect, and and I've seen these people put up numbers. You know, like like when you look at the price, you see okay, during inside the distance plus one eighty five at, at her price. You know that's I would imagine that's extremely good. Right? Uh, where is she? She's 8K. She's 8,200. So 8,200 um, and win inside plus 185. That's that's pretty good. Just doesn't come with a lot of juice. You know what I mean? When she when she gets when she gets it going, she doesn't really get takedowns. And she's not going to get takedowns against Obed's Cadenas. If she's going to win, it's going to be probably kind of like a standing submission or, or maybe if, if loopy goes for takedowns, then Dern gets kind of a reversal and a sub off her back or something like that. Don't see like Dern getting takedowns to go with this. So her ceiling is not really that high. Um, unless obviously she gets first round submission. Sure. Uh, Godinez, her inside the distance line. I have to tell you, it's pretty, it's pretty disrespectful here <laughs> because uh, here, here's the thing. Right, Godinez is, is is he? She really tilts um, DFS players, um, and and really, I wouldn't say for no reason, 
But here's here's the deal. I mean, ch check her out. She's got since she's been in the in the UFC since we've been following this. Actually, start with, with Boomy, whatever. She's won. Two, she has nothing but wins except for two losses, right? And and people saw this 130 point dism dismantling or around Al Conalosi with eight takedowns, and people figured this was going to be her forever. So in her next fight against Angela Hill, everybody was just shocked that she didn't get the takedowns or didn't go for too many, so she lost. So since then, like, everybody's like on a freaking the war path against her. She fights Cynthia Calvillo. People say the same thing. Let's go for takedown. She didn't need to. She just literally didn't need to. She just completely pieced her up and won an easy one. She didn't score well fantasy wise, but I mean, okay. And she don't. She doesn't care. Then Emily Dakota. I mean, what, what what do you what do you want? I mean, she got very 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 workman light performance on on the feet. 132 significant strikes. She did get one takedown, but. It's not what she went. She cruised here and everybody got mad at her. Okay. So then when Elise Reed came around, people kind of gave up, but she was off a four month layoff. And she goes, okay, no problem. Five takedowns, one knockdown, 400 million fantasy points. So she can still put those numbers up. And then she was up against Tabitha Ricci. And, and Tabitha Ricci is a pretty good wrestler. And Luca Diaz did exactly what she was supposed to. She kept it on the feet. And won a striking battle. Okay. Listen, she didn't score all that well, but I mean, seriously, what do you want from her? And then she was up against uh, Verna, which are uh, Jandaroba, who we just saw is kind of a beast. Okay. On the ground. So she finally met her match with respect to takedowns. Um, she did get one reversal off of that. And so, listen, she lost. And Jandaroba went on to, to pretty good, pretty good win over Amanda Limos, uh, second round sub over there. So he, here's the deal. All right, L Loopy, you don't think she has good fight IQ, but with the exception of, of one fight, she did exactly what she needed to do. Okay, and I'll tell you, in this fight, there are, I really think that she can score. I think that there are two ways. Number one is if, in fact, Mackenzie Dern, you know, wants to give up her back, and, and, and what's her name? She's in the mood, Loopy, she can get a bunch of takedowns and control time. Okay, she can. Um, and it might be a case where she gets lulled, lulled into it by Mackenzie Dern. The other thing is if you look at Mackenzie Dern, you look at her last two, two results, she got completely obliterated on the feet. And if you look at the scores of her two opponents, Limos and Andraj, they both scored like just tons. Okay? So <laughs> uh, if, if in fact... She can keep it on the feet. What's her name? Um, Loopy. She's got some knockdown upside against Dern. Dern gets knocked down quite a bit. So I actually think that that Godinez is, is is kind of the better the better side here. Um, and that's probably going to end up being the low owned take. Uh, but we'll, we'll we shall see. Maybe everybody on that by the end of the week. All right, let's see. Uh, Michael Chiesa versus Tony Ferguson. All right, he's 9,500 and he's minus like a million to one. Uh, so you just have to kind of respect this. One thing is you can't really play Ferguson. He just doesn't win the fight often enough. I know people want to play him just because they want to root, but he simply doesn't win the fight often enough. And you look at Chase inside, I and mean, he's only plus 100. I mean, what what, what are you going to do? I mean, you really going to play Michael Chase at 9,500 here? What's his round one? I mean, Plus two fifty. I guess that's okay, but I think it's a really big price. I, mean, I, I think you're probably supposed to just pass this fight. If you want to know the truth, All right? Marlon Vera versus Devison Figueredo. Um, most Marlon Vera fights are not the greatest with respect to fantasy because he usually just kind of like takes the first round off and then kind of picks up the pace when he can. So what that means is that it's very rare that somebody completely dominates a Marlon Vera fight. Uh, unless, as we've seen, it's him getting dominated. <laughs> so, like, he got just dominated by Sanhagen and by uh, by uh, O'Malley in completely different ways. Um, so, if he is going to, you know, take off the first round here and let Figueredo kind of get moving, uh, again, Vera puts himself in a position where he's not the greatest – He's not going to be the great fantasy point producer, you know, because if you give up the first round, it's tough. So 
Again, I'm probably not going to play Vera. I almost never play him because of that. And it's a question of whether you want to take a shot at Figueredo who's going to have a very poor inside the distance line. You know, you have Vera's plus 300. To, uh, and then you have Figueredo who's more, he's like plus 900. You know? is, is Figueredo going to get enough takedowns and control time, you know, uh, against Vera to, to get there in his decision? And I don't think it's the worst play in the world. But I just don't think Vera is going to be particularly popular. So you're not going to get any leverage either off of that. So I don't know. I, I think Figueredo is an interesting play. I, li I certainly like him more than the Vera side and he's certainly going to show up in my 150 max. So yeah, we'll say, we'll say that he's an okay play. Uh, all right. Uh, Sharad Magomedov versus uh, Michael Alexey Chuck. Now again, I'm going to be completely biased in this fight. I think, I think this guy stinks. The Magomedov, like the guy with the, the, with the one eye. All right. He, he, he came out like, in October, uh, and he won a decision against Bruno Silva. He got taken down by Bruno Silva like four times. He was pretty active off his bat, which was good, but he did get the decision win. And then Tricoli, he was like a million to one favorite. And, and I mean, he eventually got it done, but I, I wasn't impressed. I mean, I don't know. I mean, oh, Zaychuk, he's like a real fighter. You know, he, he's been around. I mean, he lost out, lost to these real guys, you know. Um, he's got a couple of wins. He beat Brundage. He beat Injaquani, Sam Alvey, whatever. So I mean, this guy's not bad. And, and, and you know, Maga Madoff, I, mean, I don't know. I, I think he stinks. But whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the I, – I really am the belief that this is going to be a stand-up striking battle that nobody wins. I mean, the whole fight busts. But let's take a look at the, the metrics and we'll see. Maga made up inside. I don't get it. So he's minus 130 inside. So yeah, listen, you have to respect it. Right. So in, in DFS, it's like kind of annoying, but he's 9K with with just as good of an inside the distance line as any of these other guys. So yeah, I mean you have to like it, but based on what I've seen, I I I'm not doing it. <laughs> I mean, when I say I'm not doing it, I'm probably gonna end up doing it, but I don't want to because I I, I have not been impressed with him at all. I think the inside the distance line is terrible. But again, we uh, for DFS, we can't really play that way. You have to kind of accept the odds are what they are. And then we get to Umar Numargamadoff versus Corey Sanhagen, five-round main event. You have Umar at 9,200 and Sanhagen at 7K. Um, let's look at the, the odds here. You have minus 300 plus 260. So the odds are pretty are – pretty, uh, they're tough. You know, they're, they're tough for Sanhagen. You know, if you play him, you have to expect the fact that he's only going to win the fight about, you know, what is this, 25% of the time. Um, but 7K, considering that if he wins, it's possible he can rack up a huge score. Um, I mean, he's got to be the best under, I mean, it's got to be the best underdog, right? I mean, he only wins 25% of the time. How can he be the best underdog, I guess? But every one of his wins is going to score at five rounds. Um, it just is. And we have Sanhagen inside plus 400. Not really. Mar Mar Namraga Madoff inside plus 185. That's pretty poor, I, mean, I have to say. Um, for, for him to... Boy, oh boy. That's a, what a terrible, terrible price. I mean, for him to get there at 9,200, now he's got to be have to the one. He's going to have to be the one to get these takedowns. And I don't know about any of this. I mean, he did get five takedowns in this fight, but these he's had a pretty easy run if you want to know the truth. And I don't, I don't know about any of this. Listen, if he ends up being 35, 40 percent owned, I, I think he's a pretty, I think he's a pretty legitimate fade, honestly. Um, just don't see the Sanhagen getting handled by this guy. And that's really the that's really the path for Nurmagomedov to get there. What's what else is he gonna do? He's not gonna get there in a striking battle. He's not gonna get there in even like a third round knockout. He's gotta knock him out in the first round, really. Um, maybe the second, accompanied with a takedown. So I don't know. I I I I prefer rewards members earn a redeem fast uh -oh. with thousands of destinations, winning rewards. Oh, that's a good sign. Me, me, and everyone. 
I don't know where that's coming from. Every state, every friend's getaway. But that is definitely a good sign. Every state, but without a fuss. Every handshake, every meeting you take, from every okay, but well, not one, to every bring on the sun. Anyway. With every state and every one. That's going to do it. <laughs> uh, uh, we've been through all the fights. I think we've highlighted the best plays. And, uh, ooh, look at that. So, just a review, I guess. Uh, pretty good mid-range plays here. The Alvarez-Brenner fight. And I think that the Loopy fight is, is, is very sneaky, especially the Loopy side. These favorites are like kind of fishy, you know. They're okay. Fernandez, Gaziev, even even Umar, um, Magomedov. I really think they're all sort of fishy. <laughs> so yeah, listen, you're gonna have to play some of them. So pick your favorites, I suppose. But Magomedov as chalk, we'll have to take a look at ownership later. But there's some pretty cool underdogs here too. Julian, Sam Hughes isn't terrible. Um, certainly Brenner, I've talked about before, and even um. Even San Hagen at 7K. So, listen, that'll do it for now. We'll probably do a betting breakdown at some point, and then we'll also do a line of construction video as we get closer. That'll do it. Good luck.